What's up guys and welcome to this video. I know, I know, I've been teasing you here and on my social media already for quite a while with a tank behind me, but today is the day I am finally revealing the hardscape of this tank, so without any further ado, let's check it out together. Okay guys, I hope you really like the new hardscape because I had just the rocks sitting in the tank for I guess half a year. <laughs> you can check out up here a video where George Farmer came to my place and we created the hardscape nearly half a year ago and something has been always missing and I'm so happy I tried out those branches. I had them laying around for quite a while as well and I guess the combo works pretty well together. Anyway guys, what's happening next? It's not only, you know, revealing you the hardscape and by the title of this video, you probably know we are going to plant it today. But before we can start with planting, there are a few things I have to apply to the hardscape. Mainly, a couple of branches like this two needs to be removed because there are just too many, specifically in the back of the tank. If I look in the back of the aquarium, there are so many branches there, I literally can't plant anything there. So I have to take, you know, like a cutter or something and then cut off some branches in the back of the aquarium. When this is done, I will take some rocks, make the wood kind of heavy, you know, basically attach some rocks uh, to those pieces of wood because they're not pre-soaked, so they don't float up. And when this is done, I can start preparing the plants and get my hands wet. When we're talking about plants and preparing the plants, I often say preparation is everything. And by saying this, I mean if you do the job properly before and you kind of arrange your plants, you know, in trays, you create small portions and everything, this will make your planting job so much easier and really straightforward. So what I really like to do, I use those trays from Tropica. This is how the one to grow cups come, you know, delivered inside. And I simply get rid of the liquid medium and then I divide it into small portions and put it down to this kind of trays, which will then make, like I said, the planting a very straightforward process. So let's take this little pot of Hygrophila Uruguaya. This is a really cool foreground, mid-groundish kind of plant. You can trim it and stay really low under intense RGB light. It will get super intense red. So we then peel off the lid from the tissue culture cup. We can lift up the plant or we can get rid of the liquid medium first. And then remove the plant really, like I said before shake off the liquid medium and then basically what I recommend doing dividing the plant from the roots this way you divide individual plants and you don't rip plants apart when you do it from the top so really going from the bottom hygrophila or guaya is a little bit difficult to divide but sometimes you have to, just to just have to rip them apart I like planting hygrophila uruguaya in small clumps like this. Anyway, it's very difficult with hygrophila uruguaya to divide it into very, very small parts. Uh, I, I like it, you know, you just make like two or three portions out of one tissue culture cup because this will make the plant look, look really bushy because there are lots and lots of growing points uh, from one little spot. So I'm gonna keep it like this. And let's take this Edelharis articularis mini. There is a little trick if you look from underneath you can see there is a ring on the outside and there is like a little core on the inside. Uh, maybe you remember this from my workshop video. By the way, link up here from Romania. Check this out, lots of value there. So to prepare it, I like to rip it off on one side and then divide the whole thing into, I call it the belt and the ring, the core. So we have here the belt or the ring that's been growing on the outside. This part is really stringy, so because it's been growing on the outside. And this part is really bushy because those have been kind of like the mother plants that were planted inside the cup. So if we start ripping, preparing this one for planting, I prefer using, you know, like just my fingers. Some people cut it, I use my fingers and I just pinch off little portions. 
like this and I put them down to the tray. If you are really quick in doing this and you have enough plants, you can literally, you know, hold it in your hand, pinch off and plant, pinch off and plant. That's how I do my workshops. Again, the same thing is with the belt or the ring, like I call it. You basically, you know, hold it on one side, you take your fingers like one centimeter and you pinch off a little piece and put it down. Take another one, take it off, put it down, just like this. That's good to go. Usually I start planting the aquarium right from the foreground with the smallest plant. But this time I'm doing it slightly different. The reason is I have so many, how to say, like detail and contrast plants. So I wanted to have them settled first and, you know, and then just basically plant the foreground plant around it. You know, normally I do the foreground plant and then I kind of squeeze those things inside. I thought this time I would go a slightly different routine by placing the Hygrophila Uruguaya first to those focal points, kind of framing it with the Starogai and Repens, creating this, you know, like a gentle increase in depth and then going higher to the background plants. Next plant to be inserted is the Monte Carlo, Micrantemum Monte Carlo. And something really cool about Monte Carlo is, unlike Himianthus Cuba, it really grows always like flat. It is almost hanging down if you plant it somewhere. And it can grow like really tall without losing, you know, like without uprooting. If you check out here the video from my 60p aquarium where I trimmed it down, it was literally 10 centimeters tall. And I trimmed it down, it was still rooted. It took some time to recover because it was already kind of, you know, lack of light, slightly damaged, but it has recovered nicely. Now there's a green carpet in this tank. So going forward with the Monte Carlo to plant it, you just take it uh, out of the cup. It's liquid medium and you basically rip it apart as it is. You take small portions and you squeeze it between the rocks where you need it to be. First, I will start in between those rocks and slightly work my way towards the foreground. Then I will transition through Elio Carismini to Marsilea Crinata. Let's do this. As you can see, I prefer planting into the dry soil. I do not fill in any water and this has the following benefits for me. First of all, I have no soil sticky or kind of attaching to the tweezers and basically it works super fast. By now you should see the structure that I'm aiming for uh, in the foreground of this aquarium. I mean, I've been planting here and there like little small patches and I oriented myself like you know, along the Monte Carlo. So I planted the Edo Caris Mini as an extension of the Monte Carlo that now looks like you have like, I don't know, like green lines that are, are catching the attention of the viewer and dragging it into, you know, in those sections in between the rocks towards the branches. It is very unusual to plant like this. It is more something that happens naturally by the plants growing. And instead of having like a real, you know, like one solid carpet foreground, I wanted to divide the foreground with the Iliocaris and with the Monte Carlo into like different areas to create like some depth in the foreground here. Because otherwise I would have like too much of an open space with just one type of plant. So I really hope this is an interesting technique that will turn out looking very natural. Fingers crossed, we will see. Now that I have the details in the foreground completed and the mid-ground as well, you can see the transition from the rocks over the Monte Carlo, over the Edocaris Mini coming to the very, very foreground. And this is where the Marsilea crinata is going to play a role. And Marsilea crinata is a really, really small carpeting plant with round shaped leaf. And I guess in the foreground it is like more of a pattern plant and has a mixed variety size of leaves that is going to look very natural in this aquarium. The 
foreground is finished, so I'm moving behind the rocks towards the background of the tank. For this, I have a variety of stem plants prepared, starting first with Graziola vestidula and Myrophyllum guiana. Those two are perfect for a mid to background transition, growing at a very comfortable pace. Further, I have lots of red stem plants, Rotala macrandua, Rotala valiki, Rotala atra, and some Rotala green, so there will be some green strains between all the red stem plants in the back. Lots and lots of stem planting, so let's kick in the time lapse. All the stem plants I have used in the background, they were tissue culture material and tissue culture is absolutely great because you get loads and loads and loads of material. One small cup can contain easily up to 200 stems. When planting dry, always keep in mind the plants have no moisture reservoir or whatsoever, so even if they're capable to grow immersed, they dry out very quickly in a dry environment. So for this reason, always keep a spray bottle handy and give them a proper spray once in a while. Hey guys and welcome back. Apologize a little blackout, it was necessary because I finished the aquarium at 4 a.m. and was super exhausted. It took a while to prepare all the tissue culture stem plants, but it's worth it, you know, the result will be really rewarding. However guys, it's already two days after I filled the aquarium and the plants have grown in this short period of time. Uh, I wish I could show you now, but we have to wait until the next video. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and for now I need your little help. Please comment down below your main suggestion for this aquarium, you know, my Achilles heel. <laughs> Again, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.